Good morning, good evening, hello, hi, and welcome to this week's big uh, live stream. My brain just went to Big Wool Show because I just read Big Wool Show in the chat. It is not the Big Wool Show. Um, it's this week's live chat. Hang on. Um, <laughs> that was very loud. I've just got to mute something here. There we go. Um, so, uh, good morning to everybody. Big Wool Show is in November. That's right, Bianca. Um, I am just, my brain is going at 100 miles an hour today. I have uh, I have set up the wall under again. You can just see it just here because we're getting ready to start the next colour. Uh, you can see me and you can hear me. Mike is good. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting me know. Uh, those of you that don't know about the Big Wool Show. I'll just I'll jump in right now. The Big Wool Show is a virtual yarn crafters heaven that happens in November. Uh, it is the 12th and 13th uh, in Australia. I'm not sure how that works out for you guys overseas. You'll need to check it. It runs from um, 9 a.m. on the 12th. The live streams are starting at 10 a.m. So if you want to get over and subscribe to that channel, we are live streaming from 10 till 4 with guests every 15 minutes. Um, we will be running giveaways. We will be doing so many things. It is so much fun. Um, and this week I've started uh, doing the sponsor interviews. So they are starting to go up over on their YouTube channel as well. And the reason that all this reminded me of it was the mic. One of the, one of the videos uh, I uh, did not... Um, one of the videos um, that I did, I I jumped in and started tech helping somebody else straight away and didn't check my own microphone and had the wrong microphone picked. Anyway, um, so I'm probably more stressed about that than anybody else is, <laughs> which is kind of how it is. Um, but, yeah, so I uh, just, just... Um, I'm a little overwhelmed is probably the best way to describe it. Just, just, just a little, nothing too scary. Now there is a few people that are like mentioning that their icon colors are changing. It must be your anniversary for being a channel member. Um, we get to go pink when we hit 12 months. So thank you to all of those uh, that, um, that are channel members. So if you're wondering who they are, they're the people with their names are green and they've got a little yarn ninja next to their name. They are the channel members. Uh, Kathy's saying, thank you, Chantel. I was finally able to get into my Patreon. I am so relieved to hear that. I'm glad that you're able to do that. It's, it's so frustrating when you can't get into things. Um, and it's as simple as, you know, like something so simple. Now, Abby's just urgently messaging me. I'm just seeing if it's... Um, Okay, um, it's a, it's a, she, she was urgently messaging me and then sent me a message of going, don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm going to sneeze. I've been so sneezy this morning, guys. I'm so sorry. No, yes, I feel it. I feel the sneeze. And <laughs> I feel the sneeze. You know that feeling where your whole head just goes, Arr. I'm feeling it. Um, uh where are we? Crochet with Claire is in the chat. Hello, Claire. How are you going? You a bit lurking, lurking in the mall car park. That that that's that sound that sounds. Oh, I wasn't going to mention who was the first channel member, but Claire was the first channel member. Um, yeah, there we go. Claire, Claire was the first channel member. Um, so yes. Now I I don't know. I can't. I, oh, I can't mute it, but I can turn it off. Sorry, Abby keeps messaging. So I just realized why I could hear it. And I think I've solved it. Okay. So big deep breaths in my cup today. I have um, licorice legs from T2 and a little squeeze of honey. It's probably still a dash warm, but I'm going to drink it anyway. Mmm. Yep, that is the goods. All right, so what are you all working on? Where are you up to in your projects? I actually um, needed my brain to just stop it earlier in the week. So I actually dragged the queen out to the lounge room in the heat and, um, and you know, worked on the queen a bit more. So we're nearly up to the color change. 
nearly, not quite, not quite. Hey, I've just realized uh, the new channel uh, icons for those people, that uh, it's the same as this color, which is rouge. It's nitpicks, Brava worsted. You can't see that because it's too bright. There you go. Nitpicks, Brava worsted in rouge. That will be our next color. Um, and after how much easier it had been working on the balls that we have over here, um, I decided that let's just do this. So I've actually moved the cameras. I'm, I'm so organized. Like it, it could it could crash and burn because this is live and lives crash and burn. But I, I do believe I have uh, a camera over the ball winder. There we go. One camera over the ball winder. I'm just having a quick chat. Free member super chat. Whoop, whoop from Claire. That is so awesome. Um, oh, uh, guys, just remember, if you has top chat written to change it to live chat, YouTube will change the order of things and say and leave things out. Um, Natalie Powers having trying her hand at Mark, uh, macrame, a macrame hat hanger for her father-in-law for Christmas. That is cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I did a big tidy up in my room here um, on Monday and I think it made it made a good difference because I needed to come in with a different, I needed space for interviews rather than crafting, if that makes sense. Um, so I had to just, now it's not to say the room is perfect. There is one table that is just a bit like, it's a little underway, uh, un, under, under pressure. Um I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to drop this on the floor just so that it can hopefully roll a bit easier. I've got my Nip Picks ball winder out today. So if you guys want to get your own, now it'll, it'll calm down and probably be a le little less stressed once I finish winding what I wrapped around the outside of the ball. There we go. All righty. There we go. I'm sure it's a bit noisy. But whatever, it'll only go for a little while. It's a hundred gram ball. Um, so this is the Knit Picks ball winder. It is a solid little ball winder for the for the bucks, right? Like it's twenty what twenty five bucks, I think twenty twenty five bucks, something something around that. And I I picked mine up with the yarn bowl and the Swift in the dark, the dark wood, whatever the, their dark wood color name is. And I love it. I actually used the bowl this week. I put the balls for, what was I working on? Ah, oh, I put, I, I've got show and tell. I made things and then and actually completed things, including weaving in ends and, and blocking. What? That's that's the thing. My, my brain on the weekend was like, we need to clear things out. We need to get things ready for this week. So, um, I, I finished off a project and worked and started and finished a project as well. If you follow me over on Instagram, you would have already seen it. If you don't follow me on Instagram, why not? So I that's right, Melissa, completed two projects. They're little. They're both little. Neither of them are big, both little projects. So, um, yeah, both little projects. But they are done. They are finished. And it's such a good feeling to know they are totally, totally done. Oh, here we go. The ball has come to the surface. It's like a fishing lure. Got to keep going. That big, beautiful wooden ball winder that I used last time. I love that thing, but I've packed it away because I'm clearing some space. Oh, my gosh. The sniffles are coming back. When I go out and get my um, my projects, I'm going to grab some tissues as well. There we go. End of the ball. This one had sort of, other than the fact that it was sort of wrapped around the ball at the start, there was no actual yarn buff, which was nice. So, yeah, there we go. So there's that ball winder. There's the ball. I'll be back in a second.
Finish crafts. Finish crafts. Melissa stole your sit. Wait, we got people stealing each other's stuff. I'm just gonna move some things. There we go. I think that's about right. Okay. Alrighty. Let's nestle everything back in where it goes. Yeah, the ball wind is purple. So it's kind of like a a sort of like a dark bright purple at the bottom and then a sort of like a it's a purpley beige on the top it's look it's a solid little ball wind okay it is it's not as good as the wooden one but the wooden one was like a thousand dollars and this one is like 25 so you know oh hello speaker did i forget you were on i did um, put you over there. Please don't eat the ball winder, Louis. Louis is in the weirdest, weirdest phase at the moment. Anyone who knows dogs, um, he started like whenever Tibbles the cat just comes anywhere near me, Louis just runs up and chases the cat away. Doesn't hurt the cat. The cat even just looks at him like what? Like the cat doesn't feel threatened, but just walks away. It is so weird. So if anyone knows anything about dogs, that would be great. Okay, so we've got. My mum's mitts are done, so I shall put one on for you. My mum's hands are a bit different than mine, so they fit her better than me. These have been made for a different person, but they do the job. Aww. They keep her wrists nice and warm. So that's mum's mitts, second pair done. So she, I gave her a purple pair a few years back. So she has got these now. And then we were talking about it. I can never say the word. Ca cali I always say caliometry. Caliometry is not correct. Ca calometri caliometry. I don't, I don't even know. Honestly, I don't even know. Anyway, it's a head thing. It's a scarfy thing. And I just use scraps. I have like this massive bag of four ply in grey um, that I picked up from, from Spotties. And I had some scraps left of some hand dyed. So um, I just held the strands together and just went from there. So, um, and that just sort of goes on your head like this. And you just wear it like a big beanie. Hang on, the button does up somewhere. There it is. There you go. And it's like a beanie, but not a beanie. And I put it on one of my daughter's friends the other day who has really long hair. Looks amazing. Looks so good. Let me just, big, there we go, a bit closer. Looks much better when you've got like a ponytail. Oops, sorry, elbow. Um, a ponytail or something like that. Um, but she just had her hair like down. She has really long hair and it looked fantastic. Uh, thank you, Kelly Pohl. That is exactly the one. It's, it was in. It's a free pattern. Um, it's a it, yeah. It's a free pattern on uh, Nitty, uh, Nitty's web uh, Nitty's website thing. Now I've messed my hair up. Do you know how hard it was to get my hair looking half pie decent today? I'm having a bad hair day, guys. It's a bad hair day, and I made it even worse by putting a thing on my head. Anyway, um, and I just stitched on a little. Um, oh, <laughs> there you go. I stitched on a little hair made button. There we go. Can't see it because that light is so bright today. Let's fix that. There we go. Handmade button. There we go. I can't even. There we go. Finally worked it out. Okay. So that there are the things I, I cast this on on Saturday night and then did all of the knitting on Sunday and was finished just after lunch Sunday. So um, it was wonderful just being able to sit back and just chillax. Okay, yeah, the mit the mitts are what's the pattern? It's just they're called friends friendship mitts, something like that. I'll throw links to both in the fun zone under the link for this video. Melissa is asked a very good question. It, how good did it feel to have completed something? It felt so good. So good that like, cause I'd started the, the, um, the headband and, and then I finished that and I wove in all the ends and everything. And I was just like, you know what I'm going to do now? 
I'm going to finish some mittens. And I jumped in and they were only up to like the thumb gusset. Like I just started on the thumb gusset. So I had to work the whole thumbs and all that sort of stuff. So um, that was awesome as well. So I got those finished too. So it was, it was a great feeling is the answer to that question. And it, it spurred me on, which was like, okay, I've had a break from crochet because I've been trying really hard. Oops. Yeah, I'm stuck to the Velcro. Um, really hard to not get sidetracked from this project, okay? Um, not since I got sidetracked a million times. Um, and I just needed a break. That's right. I needed a break from the queen. But I didn't want to not craft, if that makes sense. Oh, everything's here. It's just under things. Oh, I should make sure that's not sitting on top of the power board. Not smart. Um, so we have... Uh, a row of purple and then one more row of this pink and then we are on to the new pink which this is the second last color there's only one more color after that yeah little projects are great melissa they really are so um lots of people popping in their members milestones congratulations lisby and sally i did see sally's earlier A change is as good as a holiday. Yes. And I just think I was just feeling a little like I, I knew I had a really big week coming up and I just knew I needed just to calm down just a dash before I got into a very big week. And I think it I think it did what it needed to do because I hit Monday as refreshed as I possibly can because I don't like Mondays. Um, and, yeah, it was just a really nice way to start Monday morning. I got up. Um, I gave this room a bit of a zhuzh. Was it Monday? It might have been actually, you know what? It was Sunday morning when I did the tidy in here because Monday I hit the ground running. And I think that's what it was. I knew I had stuff straight up first thing Monday morning. Um, and so Sunday morning I came in here and gave it a bit of a zhuzh, like like emptied the desk and wiped it all down and dusted everything, except I realised I forgot to dust this. So I need to get in here and dust that. But, yeah, dusted all the things and just, you know, did a general tidy, tidy, cleared some things up. And now um, after some excellent advice, I want to change up the set a little bit just for the, for the, um, uh, the, Ah, my brain's not working. Big wool show interviews. So I just want to, you know, get in there and do a bit of that. Um, yeah, there's just things. There's so many, many, many things that I'm just enjoying right now. And there's so much coming and so much happening. And it's just such an awesome feeling. Uh, what did Leanne say? Jennifer has been knitting on the West Knits cowl. Not so little. Yeah, I, I'm hearing. I'm hearing that it's quite a big, quite a big project. Although you can kind of tell by the number of skeins of yarn that it's going to be quite big. Um, Freaky Geeks in the chat. Hello, Freaky. Well, hello again, as you may say. Um, but yeah, so just, I might just push this out a little, get that off the screen. Just realized that I usually have a lot more blanket in the shot. So let's fix it up. Let's get in and do the stuff that we normally do. Uh, John says, uh -huh, I don't like Mondays. Yes, I did. I may have just mentioned that um, because I don't. I'm not the biggest fan. Um, it, look, you know what? It depends. I don't, I think my issue is more I don't like waking up. <laughs> it doesn't matter what day it is. I like to sleep. Uh, and I like to stay awake late. And um, one thing I've been very much enjoying right now is that um, I can get up half an hour later than I usually have to. So, you know, I'm enjoying that. And I also can get up half an hour later and I don't have to get up and jump straight into rush, rush mode. I can get up half an hour later and sit down and have a coffee and you know, plan out my day and just, you know, chill for it just a little bit. Whereas normally it's like up at 6.30, bam, 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 running around like a lunatic. Come on, it's time to go, get out of bed. Bah, 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 bah. You guys know the school morning drill. 
or well, most of you do anyway. Molly said that I finished the flax jumper. It's a free pattern from Tin Can Knits. She's going to pop a photo in the fun zone. Oh, can't wait to see. You mean you take your time for a bit then rush? Yes, that's exactly what I do, Freaky. I do prefer to do things efficiently. So if I can sit down and plan it out and then get into action mode, I feel good about that. Um, whereas if I have to sort of just wade straight in, my brain hasn't had a chance to process what it thinks is the most efficient way to do things. Um, Vampyr started a new project yesterday. I didn't want to lug a big project on the train to the city, making it another cover for Artzug's footstool, playing around with the mosaic crochet. Nice. I'm a bit of a fan. You think I'd be sick of mosaic crochet right now, wouldn't you? The answer is no. No, I'm not. Um, I even bought some yarn to make another blanket that may or may not, I haven't decided yet, be a mosaic crochet blanket. It will not be a queen size blanket. I can tell you that right now. It will be a lap rug. I will make sure the next blanket I work on is a lap rug for the lounge room and is not 27,000 millimeters tall. 27,000 millimeters? That doesn't sound very tall. Uh, well, 27,000, uh, what is that, 2.7 metres? That sounds about right, actually. Um, new sewing machine needle time for the Game Widows. You're on fire working. Game Widows is making a gazillion totes for the Big Wool Show. Um, Melissa is on to her second half hex for the Coral Story Blanket and then the joining. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, Leanne's nearly done all her Christmas baubles. That is fantastic. Artag, you're late, mate. I don't even know what to say to you. I can barely look at you. Um, John's been slacking on the squares but working on electronics project. Do you know what? I think sometimes we need to put our hooks down and do something else. I know. Shocking, right, that I say that. But I definitely think that sometimes we just need something else. We need to put our projects down and just do something else, and then we can come back and appreciate our projects more. That's how I see it. So I love to be able to just jump between different things. So what have you all been doing this week? I have, so far, it's Thursday here for me. So this week I've been recording interviews for The Big Wool Show. I have been doing some client work. I have... I've been working on my queen. Shocking, I know. Um, uh, yesterday we had Claire's live stream over on her channel. And what else? I don't even know. Just, just lots of little things. Oh, packing orders, shipping orders. The Marja Craft stocks in, so if you need a drive bands, they're restocked. Um, the... I had a courier yesterday card me while I was home. That always makes me feel awesome. Like, dude, I was right there. You, you, do you know how I know he didn't even come to the gate? Because Louis didn't even react. That's how I know. Um, Jackie has popped a link in for the Big Wool Show. That is awesome. Um, Artseg says that he has been dying of a mundane plague. Bampy has been keeping me alive. That's good. Mundane plague. I love that. Is that just a cold? Is that the standard cold? Is that what we call it now, mundane plague? Because I love that, if that's what that is. Um, Angela has been cleaning and crocheting. Frances said that on Sunday she went to the Sydney Quilt Show. I demonstrated for the Spinners and Weavers Guild. It was a big day, but it tired me out for the week. Yes. Yep. Um, Melissa's Bendigo Water arrived. Yep, mine arrived as well. I'm very happy with my colour choices. Uh, Natalie, me too. Yep, nagging our kids to study for their exams. Yeah, Abby only has one more exam to do, but the exam blocks until like for another two weeks. So that's exciting. And she's really ticked off because she only has one more exam in the entire exam block and they're not allowed to take work shifts. 
during um, study sessions. So, like, because she's at home. Like, she's actually gone to the beach today because her next exam isn't until next week. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So getting carded actually means two things here. One is that. One is checking ID, for, like, for when you're buying alcohol. And the other is when the courier doesn't knock on the door or the post man doesn't knock on the door and they leave you the little card going, hey, we were here, but you weren't. Now you have to go to the post office to pick up your stuff. Or if it's a courier, now you have to contact us to organise a redeliver time. Um. Leanne, excellent. Please go and join the Big Wool Show channel. So if you are subscribed here, um, you will probably enjoy the content that we do over there as well. Lots of live streaming, lots of interviews, lots of yarn talking. Uh, and for the Big Wool Show weekend, we're planning some giveaways as well. So like what we did last year. Jackie's still waiting on her back order from July from Bendigo Woolen Mills. Oh, my goodness. That's a long one. Um Kathy finished her lap blanket, getting close to the end of 60 KB, about 34 rows left on my knit scarf. Now, I have a question, okay? And it's a big question. Has anybody ever knitted a whole blanket before? I've never knitted a blanket and, and I'm tossing up whether or not to knit my next blanket, especially considering it's going to be a lap blanket. It's not going to be a queen size doona. Um, I just don't know. I've got beautiful, uh, so uh, from Bendigo Woolen Mills, I have some eight ply cotton. It is the beautiful, um, hang on, tea in the cup, um, French navy blue, and I think it's snow, whatever their white is. Um, Freaky says to knit a hole. Ah, very funny. Yes, you would need that. That is technically correct. Oh, yeah, that's right. You've made a, a blanket out of sock scraps, haven't you, Game Widows? Knit Spin Girls. I've knitted lots of blankets. I need to talk to you about knitting blankets, I think. I'm scared. I'm a bit nervous. It's a big, it's a big project. Christina says, I've knit blankets. So, guys, over in the fun zone, I would love for you to drop me the links of your favourite knitted blankets because I'm considering my next blanket to be knitted. We've, we've done a lot of crochet on this channel over the last however long and it's time that we balance it out a little, I think, and pop in a knitted project. Um, so, a knitted... A knit a blanket, I think, might be the way to go. Um, Kelly says, I doubt I would ever knit a blanket. would just take too long. Crochet all the way for blankets. I prefer the look of crochet blankets. I love the look of crochet blankets. I really do, but I actually also love the look of knitted blankets too. So I, that's why I'm torn. And that's why I'm thinking if I make it a little lap rug, it's actually less stitches than what it would take to knit me a, like knit me a jumper, I reckon, possibly, or similar number of stitches to knit me a jumper. Um, except, you know, it's probably easier because there's no sleeves and neckband shaping. <laughs> I would hope there's no sleeves and neckband shaping in a blanket, honestly. Um, I could, oh, I could knit in squares. I didn't even think of knitting in squares. I do, ha I do enjoy mattress stitching. I don't know. Do I want to make it? A, I don't know. I don't know. And I only have two colours and I don't want to buy more colours. I do have some little pops of colour because I don't want to buy anything more. I've got four balls of eight ply in the blue and in the white. And then I'd have to double check, but I think I've got one ball in purple, like a dark purple and a light purple. So maybe some little little pops. Didn't you knit a corner-to-corner -corner blanket? I crocheted a corner-to-corner -corner blanket some time ago. I did, absolutely. Um Freaky says, yeah, and, and you're right, that is garter stitch where there's no purling, it's just knitting, absolutely. Um, Game Winner says, I did a mitered square blanket in the, in the last. Uh, if you like colour work, knitted, have a look at the Persian Dreams Worsted Blanket by Janice. It's beautiful. 
Oh, can you can you link that over in the fun zone? That sounds amazing. That sounds really interesting. See, now I'm torn. Do I have a knitted blanket that's simple for live streams or do I do one that's intricate and amazing just for me? Um, what about knitting squares as a sample? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Knitting triangles because one can never have enough tails to sew in. That's that's the other thing, isn't it? When you're knitting squares, you've got to... I knitted it during live. I've, I don't think I've done corner to corner. Oh, the baby blanket. It was a little tiny baby blanket. And it was just a, it was like a start in one corner. And I, I know the one you mean now. Yes, I did. I did do that one. Yes, sorry. You are right. There's one called Stitch on a Sunday by Row Row and Cades that I've started. Oh, that sounds interesting. I love the name. Can you use the tails to seam it? You probably could. If you left your tails long enough, you could use the tails to, to weave in all the all the, the bits and bobbers. Um, I'll make that for. It was tiny. And do you know what? Like I wasn't happy with the actual overall shape. It did its job and it looked good for what it was. But I don't think I'd make that one again. No, you didn't imagine it. You did not imagine that. I just forgot about it. That's all. Um, I am doing the right thing, right? I'm just double checking. I haven't just gone off on a tangent and I'm just crocheting whatever I feel like. That's never happened before. Um, knit a Christmas stocking to use as a cover for your mind. That's a, do you know what? That's a really cute idea. Hello, Russell. Welcome to the chat. Um, I don't know about Christmas stocking, but yes, I could totally knit a cover for the mic. That would definitely work. Um, yeah. That's a cute little project. I could, I've got some scraps. I've got some, I mean, who in the chat has no scraps? Like seriously, no, no scrap yarn except for Russell. Who in the chat has no scrap yarn, no leftovers? I mean, I just put the leftover blues from those mitts into a, into a bucket, a bucket, a crate. Uh, Molly says, not me, not me. How not you? Like, what do you use your scraps for, Molly? Angela has a tote bag full of scraps. And when I say scraps, I'm not just talking tails. I'm talking like ends of balls and things like that, like leftovers, not not just like, you know, bits that you cut off, but actual like leftovers. Oh, good point. I forgot your wife's a crafter, Russell. Um, Leanne, that was a fantastic use of your scraps. They are all being put into her queen. So she's using up all of her colours. I don't have any. I give all my leftovers to Vampire, so it's her problem. Um, so Molly used her scraps up. Okay. All sorts of things. Coasters, headbands, dolls. That's a great idea. Do you, do you finish your project and then use the scraps straight away or um, or do you keep them aside until you're inspired? Molly. That question was for Molly. Um yeah, I, I try not to, like, I try to make projects that use the majority of something, but I'm going to have scraps left over after this queen, that's for sure. We did have an idea for what to do with those, didn't we? So I'd be not, someone could remind me what that idea was, that'd be great. Um, because there are lots of little scraps. We could wind them all into little balls, actually. Once That can be like the final task after the queen's all finished, is winding all the scraps and ends of saggy balls into neat little cakes and yes I know exactly how that sounded the second it came out of my mouth I'm very sorry um but I was thinking of like you know when you've got the the skeins that they come in the commercial skeins and when you've used them from the middle they go flat and saggy um I use uh make baby beanies with hand spun socks to match the blanket uh look Usually that I would like that idea, Freaky, but I, I wouldn't wear acrylic socks, truth be told, because I am just 
a snob is probably what it boils down to. Cushion cover maybe, yep, possibly. Uh, partway through a Bavarian stitch blanket using up all our scraps may take a while, but it looks good. <laughs> John says you're lucky. I was typing it another way. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, I can make Claire's scrap blanket. Abs Actually, that's probably a great idea. I love Claire's scrap gans. Um, Deb's joined the chat in the nick of time. <laughs> Thank you, Mod, for allowing that. Whichever mod did that. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. Um, uh, Molly says, I keep them when I need them. The memory is still okay for remembering that I have something. All my scraps go into a bag, so I know where to look. Okay. So you do have scraps. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, all of my queen scraps are going back into the same, like I had a one of the cubes out of my um uh out of my ikea you know those cuby ikea things one of the fabric cubes that i i had all the yarn in and as i've used it up i've put all the ends of the balls back in there so it'll be very interesting to see what's left over game widow says her scraps become gnomes um Knit Spin Girl says, I've made two queen size blankets out of sock yarn scraps and still have leftovers. Oh my goodness. That is some serious, serious scraps right there. Um, I cut my finger yesterday, like just on the edge. Like I was just slicing up tomatoes and, you know, missed a tomato and got just dabbed my finger like a little. Didn't hurt that much. It's really annoying now because it's just that little tiny little edge of skin that's just grabbing the yarn. It's really doing my head in. Um, it, it, I don't like it. I just thought I'd share that. Um, so, um, yeah, Leanne, I just saw that message pop through. Um, DM me your email address and I'll add you to that document. Um, I didn't realize you didn't have it. Sorry. Um, I've been with. Uh, winding my weather blanket scraps into ball as I've been going, I keep scrap balls handy and, and add odds and ends as I go. Okay. Melissa says, I have a huge chest of scraps. I cleaned it out and donated it to a friend in 2020, and now it's overflowing again. I mean, it's it's nearly the end of 2022, and, and Melissa, you are prolific. You make so many things, and I'm not surprised that you have an overflowing um, chest every couple of years. Yeah, I agree with you. If I could find, if I knew in my electrical tape what, well, if I know where it is, it's not inside. It's out in my tool chest, out in the back patio, because um, I was using it for something. Um, add add odds, no ends. Odd add odd. I don't even know. I'm sorry, John. I just. My brain hurts right now. It's, it's a hurting brain, a hurting brain of doings, of doing all the things. It's a big week. Um, I only have one interview today, which is great. And then I have some tomorrow and then three on Monday. And then that is it for the sponsor interviews. That's nine of them done. So, yes. It will be, it is fun. I enjoy the interviews. They're a lot of fun, but they are a lot of work, especially considering I screwed up the first one and now my brain's like got this, like I've, I've, I had to make a new checklist, like make sure your microphone is selected. Like that's legit live streaming 101, okay, and I botched it. Luckily you can still hear. I just sound a little far away. So, yeah, but it's all good. It's all good. That's the nature of live and live recordings because sometimes stuff happens and you got to try and not get in your own head about it, she says, totally in her own head. Um, Leanne says, it's really difficult to order the perfect map for a project. I always get nervous and order way more than I need. 
I tend to do the opposite, Leanne, as we've discussed before here. Um, I'm that person that's like, oh, I'm just going to order two balls of all these pretty colors. That's great. And then realize, you know, five years later when you go to use it, that you actually needed three balls of each color. You've already started. And now you need to try and source yarn from five years ago that's discontinued in the exact same color um, batches so that they're not different. Makes it exciting. It puts a bit of thrill in it, but I didn't want to do that this time. So I ordered four balls of each color because <laughs> I had no pattern in mind. I just wanted to take advantage of the cotton sale while it was on. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear. I've, I do have the fan on. It's getting quite warm here at the moment. We had a 30 degree day here yesterday and apparently we're going to have another one today. I don't know what the temperature is right now. Let me just check. I'm just going to check um, bomb, bomb who don't want to be called bomb anymore. Cop that. All oh, right. It is already 30 degrees. Feels like 31 and a half. So that's great. That's it's, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. That's, 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 I, I'm not happy. I'm just not happy with that. Like, no. I don't agree with that weather forecast. Apparently there's also another storm coming. So to that, that's all I'm going to say. I uh, know that's 30 degrees Celsius. So what is that? That's like 96, 97, I don't know, 95. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, Kelly, I definitely prefer Leanne's problem as well. Oh, they've changed their minds because of the backlash and after they already spent their $200,000 on their rebrand and everyone lost their minds. Um, can somebody tell me what, what 30 degrees, like, well, 31 and a half is in, um, in, in, the, in the Fahrenheit's pretty prees? Um, for those that use the kits, do they get in the right amounts? The only kit I have is one my son gifted me and I've not made it yet. It depends on the kit and it depends on you, honestly. If you don't get gauge and your, your stitches are like too big, you're using more yarn and you may run out. So it's really important when you have a kit to try and get gauge because they've based those kit amounts off, the, off that. So, um, oh, there you go. John says 31C is 88.7. Thank you. Um, Jennifer says 14 feels like 10 in Bathurst. Gosh. Yeah, it is. It's warm. It's warm here today and it's humid and we still don't have our main air conditioner fixed, although we have booked it in. We've booked in the repair, guys. So I need everybody to please cross your fingers. I'll tell you when the repair guy's here because we're having to pay this ridiculously high amount of money for a hopefully that fixes the problem because it's one of those situations where we have to replace a, a card in the machine and that should fix the problem. But once that's fixed, we may have to go to the next thing that now that that's, that error is gone, we can actually see the real error. So please cross your fingers because we really don't want to have to spend another, you know, $1,500. Um, I've been learning if you knit tight, you'll find you have leftover yarn. If you knit loose, you'll run out. Yeah, so that's freaky. That's just exactly it. When you knit loose, you're actually using more yarn. So um, you've got to, you know, you've got to get the gauge for a kit. That's basically what it boils down to. Um, I quite often, oh, I'm at the end of the row. Hang on a second. Holy dooly. Um, so that's that one. Then there, and then we go there. I'm like right at the end of the row. I'm like, what? And then beep, beep. And done that row is over bye bye row thank you linesman thank you ball boys that was surprising finish wasn't expecting that um yeah so sorry i was i was shocked when i made it to the end of the row um 
just grab the we're on the last row of the blush the blush pink um yeah what was i saying uh yeah if if you have a kit you've really got to just double check you're getting the gauge um sometimes it's it's useful if you're a bit late to the party on the kit because you can read what other people said uh then there's some companies that send out kits with not the whole amount and they do it intentionally and i they really make me angry if i've ordered a kit i really do want the whole lot not just a taste because that's what a kit is it's not a sample pack dudes um jackie yes absolutely i have seen some kits that don't have enough yarn you have to keep the pattern and 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 compare to what is being supplied versus what you need absolutely thank you art dog turn your fan on in solidarity <laughs> vampire says no no art dog it's only 16 degrees <laughs> okay um all right that makes sense john that's why you're not using the icelandic wall because you're worried about that and this is an excellent piece of advice check on other people's projects to see if they had enough oh holly i hate that that's annoying bye melissa have an awesome appointment Melissa, uh, I know I harp on about, uh, uh, Kelly is saying to Leanne, I know I harp on about Ravelry, but some people will post their photo of their leftovers while they bought kits to show how much they had. Reading notes can sometimes help. Reading, I will, when I'm picking up a pattern from Ravelry, the first thing I do is I look at it and go, oh, that's really cute. Then I jump into other people's projects because there's a tab for it. And then you can read if people are struggling with the pattern, if their kits didn't have enough yarn, if they changed the yarn to something else and how it looked doing that. Like I read through as many of them as I can um, because I find that to be such a wealth of information. It is so good. Because um, I'm with you on that one, Kelly. I may be terrible at adding my own projects. Um, I've just realized that, I added my, um, I added the mitts for my mums, but I haven't put any of the finished photos or said that it's finished on Ravelry. So I should probably get in there and do that. And I haven't even added the headband. So I will get in and do that as well. That will be my task for this afternoon after I, because I'm getting a little break between live stream and the next interview. So that will be my task. Now, where am I up to? I'm just making stuff up here. That's, and then one more. Okay, and then three. Um, John's got to run. The electronics got me behind schedule. I need to make something for dinner. Oh, my goodness. Yes, John, go and have dinner. Please. We'll catch you next time. Have an awesome one. Bianca says that same here. Notes on Ravelry are brilliant. Yes, they are. And I will read all those notes before I buy the pattern as well usually sometimes i'll be like oh, i need it and just buy it and then i regret as usually those are the ones that i regret um well you did you you did more than pop in and say hi john so i appreciate that uh jackie says yes i need to tell you that there isn't enough yarn to complete the project i get that they may be trying to meet a certain price point see this is the thing for me on that one jackie how are they meeting a certain price point if you can't complete the project? Oh, yeah, but you still have to buy the extra yarn, so it's a bit pointless. Exactly, exactly. Like they're not meeting a price point at all because you don't get to make the garment for that price or the project for that price. It frustrates me. If you're making a kit, it should at least make the entirety of whatever the smallest size is. That should be the bare minimum on a kit. Like, seriously. Because it's a kit and a kit is supposed to be a completed thing. Oh, my gosh. We've just found something else to add to the poke the buttons. Kits with not enough yarn. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize that was one that got me. That's a new one. Um, oh, uh, 
Russell, you probably haven't caught them because they are for the Big Wool Show. It's a it's a client job, um, and it is um, we're talking all about yarn and different businesses. Um, so far, we've had a discussion with um, Kathy from Cat and Sparrows. Um, she's a fiber dyer and spinner. Uh, we had a talk with um, Alice Dare Chu from Walter Yarn um, and about how they've got this new amazing stuff, which you'll need to watch the interview for, which that will get released this afternoon. Um, had a chat with a, another indie dyer. I've got more indie dyers coming. So it's all yarn craft related for the Big Wool Show. But if you go and check out their YouTube channel, you can see last year's stuff. And also the interview with um, uh Cat from Cat and Sparrows is up. Um, other people's on other people's photos on Ravi are also great to see how the project looks when real people knit it and wear it rather than the professional photo shoots. Yeah, I especially like to see how things sit on the plus size girls because they're just about most people, while they include the plus size sizings, they quite often never include an image of the garment on a plus size person. So sometimes there's massive disappointment because you think, oh, my gosh, this pattern's been made for a plus-size person. And then you go through and you read about it and you're like, oh, yeah, they just graded it. So, therefore, the neckline is 14 million centimetres wide. Um, basically, you know, your shoulders poke out of your neckline because that's not how grading works, people. <laughs> oh, look. Um I really hope, Kelly, you're keeping a list of things that we can make buttons of for the poke the bear packs. <laughs> like incorrect grading for plus size patterns because we're not bigger everywhere. Our heads aren't bigger. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah. Yes, you do need to shoot this year's video as well, Game Widows. Absolutely. Vampire says maybe they're just taking advantage of those that don't finish pro projects. I mean, they could be taking advantage of people like me who don't finish projects. She says with two finished projects under her belt this weekend. Um, yeah, Jackie, that's it. But our arms do get bigger. What is with that? They like gray the, the like gray the crap out of the neckline and then keep the arms the same size like what anyway sorry that bothers me um but yes so um i don't even know what i was going to say that list is ever growing yeah jackie it is well we'll be doing like button packs like updated for 2022 updated for 2023 um yeah so many issues <laughs> got so many soapboxes I've got opinions and I'm not afraid to share them but I don't actually have opinions about everything funnily enough um notes in people's projects sometimes point out mistakes in the pattern is really helpful to let you know it's not just you oh absolutely my very first um knitted shawl lace knitted shawl I can't remember the name of the pattern anyway I was working on it and it was I just was like, this is not symmetrical. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And because it was just not symmetrical, like, by, like, one repeat or something, like, or half a repeat or something. It wasn't, like, you know, like, asymmetrical or anything like that. It was just, like, it was a triangle shawl and the two sides didn't quite match. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm doing something wrong. Turns out the designer liked it like that. And that was the design. And someone in the notes had rewritten nearly the entire pattern to make it so that it was mirrored. And the number of people that made her version instead of the designers, I think it ticked off the designer. Because the designer was commenting like, you know, I don't like this. This is supposed to be um, a, a non-mirrored thing, blah, blah, blah. And, and this person was like, everyone's making the mirrored version. But, yeah, I honestly, like, because I was new at that, it was my very first knitted lace. It was super basic. I thought, I've got this. I can totes do this. Yes, definitely. And then it was just like, nope, nope, can't do it. Not working. Failure. I am a failure. And then it turned out that the pattern was a failure. 
and that, you know, I needed the help of awesome, experienced lace knitters who'd gotten there before me and had left amazing notes. You know what? The more the day goes on today, I think I'm catching a cold. I've just realized my nose is doing the nose thing. And I don't need a cold this week, please. What was it? Mundane, mundane plague. I don't need a mundane plague this week, please. I'm good. I would like to continue on with my tasks at hand. Goodness me. Um, but yes, good notes are always appreciated on Ravelry, I think. She says, never putting in finished projects. I'll get there. Um, this is the last row of this colour. I've really enjoyed working in this colour. So then, then we're on to the rouge, this one here. But I also really like the rouge. I'm not a pink girl, but I like that one. Um... I think I missed something there, Sally. What did I miss? I'll bet I'll bet it again now than in a few weeks. I uh, sorry, I, I understand now you're talking about my mundane plague. And you're probably right. Better to get it now than in a few weeks. Yes. I agree. Sorry, it did take me a little second there just to, for my brain to catch up with the fact that I had asked a question. Yes, I don't want to be sick for the big wool show. You are 100% right. That would kind of suck. I have a lot of work to do that weekend. Okay, so I'm thinking... The more I think about it, right, the more I'm thinking a knitted blanket would be nice, but I don't think I want to do squares. Um, I think I would like to do one continuous thing. It could be mitered. It could be it could be entrelac. It could be lots of different options, but I think I would like it to be one big project. Would, although, although would that mean that the blanket will stretch out of shape because there's no stitching holding everything in? Like, because, you know, like that's the thing with the with the, with the the seamless top-down garments is that the seams actually help hold the shape and hold the construction. And depending on the yarn, they could stretch out of shape a lot more. Oh, man, why did my brain have to go there? It's now like, you know what, maybe you should do the squares. But I don't want to weave in all the ends. I'm such a baby. I hate ends. And I really suck at weaving ends in and knitting. Crochet, bomb. Total, total God at weaving in ends. Knitting, I just fail. Linda says that there's so much work to do before the big wool show. Absolutely. Um, big decisions for those on um, the live streaming package is whether or not you want to do a giveaway. So that's always a fun one. I enjoy the giveaways. Whoops, what have I done here? I did something. Oh, no, I did the right thing. It's all good. Nothing to see here. Um, Francis says, how long did everyone Bendigo orders to come in? I ordered some for a class I'm doing now, and I'm worried it won't arrive in time. I ordered during that cotton sale. I ordered cotton only during the cotton sale. Um, and it came really quickly. It's probably the fastest Bendigo order I've had in years. Whereas I know Jackie's still waiting on an order from back in, a back ordered order from back in July. So I think it's, I think it's hit and miss. Um, but yeah, but mine's, my order from the sale, I ordered within a few minutes of the sale starting, or at least a few minutes from the email that I got that the sale was starting. And I received my order was it Monday or Tuesday. It was very, it was very quick. I was actually really quite surprised. 
Um, yeah. So. Um, Francis says, I ordered on the 20th and checked I'd ordered in stock items. Ah, uh, has it been shipped yet? Like, have you received your email to say they've shipped it? Because that seems odd if they haven't. They normally try to get them out the door fairly fast. Um, Linda, making the video is making the video in advance is what I'm doing. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a bit fun getting those uh, stall holder videos in. I've got to do one as well, to be honest. I was, I was writing down what I wanted to say yesterday so that I was all ready. My, my piece of advice, Linda, is make sure, if you're doing it on your phone especially, make sure your phone is in landscape, not portrait, okay? So make sure it's sideways so that it fills the whole screen, not just a little narrow bit in the middle. That's my piece of advice. Nope, not shipped. Um, ah. Jackie says they don't tell you whether or not they're in stock on the Bendigo Wool Mill site. Yeah, I didn't think that they did either, to be honest. Um, unless you like rung them and checked, I don't know, but their website doesn't tell you. Um, yeah. Friend, uh, Kelly says that she ordered on the 19th and hers is arriving today. But, um, I would also double check your like spam folder or something like that. Just to double check you haven't received a ship notification. So... When you go to the checkout page, it does. Does it really? I have never even noticed. Maybe that's a newish feature. Mind you, I just was just like, mine, click, paid, make dinner or whatever. No, I wasn't making dinner. What was I doing? I don't know. I was doing something. Because I kept toing and froing over which blue I wanted. And then I went, you know what? No, I want I want that one. I want the dark French navy one. Um, the in-house tech support will have to be conscripted. Okay. Okay. I was thinking maybe I don't have a cold because, you know, I am allergic to dust and there was some stuff flicking off that pink yarn. So maybe I'm just having a little reaction and just some antihistamine will help. Um, love the in-house tech support. Wish mine wasn't busy. Uh, yes, and the in that's the other thing. Um, I, I, will, I will mention it and I probably should – make this a thing for um part of the big wool show for when people are in this when you are recording you want your camera to be either at your line of height of your eyes or just above um don't go below below is never flattering and also you don't want a light on directly over your head it just casts all shadows down you want your light in source in front of you but not too bright just a soft light um yeah. Uh, also, I have the biggest critic and will be told off if I do it wrong while still getting told I'm too busy to help you. Yeah. Yeah, there is that as well. So, yes, there's some, some little tips there for you. Um, is just to make sure that your camera angle is at... So the actual camera, not just the screen, but the actual camera, like... um here i'm, I'm going to change camera angles here you should be able to see it oh no you can't see it i was going to say my camera is just here but you can't see it um so yeah you want that camera because mine's just above my eye height because i needed it above my laptop as well so just above my eye height and um my latest photo on instagram again is just just on my eye height so it's just a excuse me it's a little bit lower I put it in my Instagram stories. So, but yeah, that's, you just need to have it just above your eye height and you need 
no lights directly over the top of your head. They need to come in at an angle. So watch those ceiling lights. A junior tech support will probably have opinions as well. I know mine does. Hey everyone, sorry, I'm not quite sure what has happened here. Um, I'm just going to um, come back. I've, I've, my whole computer has frozen, so um, I've got to actually do a hard reset. So bear with me, I'm on my phone. I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, I don't even have my phone on a uh, mount at the moment. So you get to see all the background stuff while I jerry-rig something up here. Um, just going to boot that back up. So um, I'm just reading the chat here at the side. Can you see me and hear me now? Um, I have nothing to tell me what's going on right this second unless you guys let me know in the chat like worst camera angles right now i'm on my phone and we want to go we don't want that and we don't you know <laughs> uh your computer is suffering from heat stroke no it's cold it just froze it just froze what a mess of stuff yes uh, oh did you see like over here oh that's the table of doom that's all my cricket stuff that's where i dumped everything um, here, let's have this angle. This is the better angle. Okay, you can see me and hear me. I'm just trying to reboot my computer to get it all going for you guys. Um, I could, I'm going to have to flip my phone right upside down. Are you ready? So, everyone, close your eyes because I actually have to like flip it. There we go. Because my um, little mount. Um, it's, I'm go yeah, it's not going to work. It's all fine. So stream tour. All right, here we go. Computer is rebooting. This is what happens with the live stream sometimes. Looks like you're on a carnival ride. Yeah, I'm holding the phone with my hand, Russell. Hang on. I'm just seeing if I can. Sorry, my fingers are over everything here. Just trying to tighten it up. There we go. All right, now I'm not holding it with my hand. All right, let's see what we get. Okay. Um, no, that way. Gosh, we don't want more of the background. We want to fix it. <laughs> There's my fan, my life-saving fan. 
Okay, let me just see if we can get in. And I have no idea why we crashed, but we will see what went wrong. I'm going to kill some things here. And Thursday Live, go live. Um, yes, so, uh, all righty. Start the virtual camera. My concern is when I go in, it's going to be a little echoey for just a second while I reconnect everything. All right, everybody. So if you've got headphones on, I want you to take them off. Yeah, Chrome didn't shut down properly. I know. Okay. Settings, OBS, audio. That is good. Okay. Okay, I think I'm back. Hang on. I've just got to make sure that there's no volume. I'd like to be able to. All right, guests. Okay, I'm going to put that down there and away. Okay, the sound is very low. Okay, let's. I can't boot that from the stream. All right, I am back. I'm just going to have to move my phone. It won't let me leave. There we go. Okay. I think we're good. All righty. Back to the microphone. Um, I'm back. I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't know why we... What happened? But we're back now. Back to crocheting. I'm scared to press a button because I pressed a button last time. Um, then uh, it crashed. So fingers crossed, everybody. There we go. Okay, I'm not frozen. That's good. Uh, this webcam's changed its colours, but we're just going to have to deal with that. I'm not going to mess around. Whew, yes, heart rate is up, but it happens. Do you guys remember back in the day if there was a problem with the stream, how we had to let everybody to know, know to go to the new stream? Well, we don't have to do that anymore. StreamYard keeps the stream open for us so that we can just jump back in. I have no idea why my computer did its thing. It did not overheat. It was not a thermal error. At least your hands aren't blue. I mean, that's an excellent point, right? Uh, that's that's a great point. Publish that on your live channel as a planning guide for fallbacks. Oh, absolutely. Always have your phone on separate data ready to jump in. I've even seen um, the likes of live streaming specialist Nick Nimmin uh, have to do that. Kelly Pohl has sent a super sticker. It's a swivelly chair. I love that. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much, Kelly. I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, we, we're back up and going now. I just have to get my heart rate back down to standard heart rate areas. <laughs> oh, gosh. You can be, you can plan as much as you like. Things are happening. Uh, Alison says our stuff's up when it does Microsoft updates in the background. Uh, I don't think I've got anything running. I, I cancel, I usually cancel everything out. I mean, there could be stuff running now because I was just like jumping back in. Um, so, you know, who knows? Who knows what could be happening? Um, uh, long two, day, two days of filming houses and two parks plus drone. Wow. That is, and that's that's a big day and that's a hot big day as well, Russell. Feed up and enjoy. Get some ice cream. 
dig out some of that ice cream that your wife loves so much and, and keep some for yourself. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I am, I, I don't know what we were talking about before then. No idea. My brain is just totally gone into stream, you know, get back in, sort the stream out mode. Um, heading for the coffee ice cream now. Awesome. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you do also have that clip setting available. Absolutely. Oh, we were talking about camera angles. We were. We're making sure that, because that's why I touched the stream deck. Yes. Um, making sure that we have, like, uh, camera angles that are flattering and also pick up the best light, for not just for your face but also for your yarn. Um, camera, uh, lighting colours are really important as well. Um, I have everything in here set to daylight. Um, so... Or, or at least the cool light settings if I don't get to choose like a, a, an actual like Kelvin degrees, which I like uh, 5,500 or 5,400. Um, if you can't actually choose that, then I go with the cool light rather than a warm light because it cha doesn't change the tone of the colour. So, uh, yeah. It's, um, guys, we've nearly finished a second row. Like, I think my brain's just like, I want to start the next colour. Be right back, I hear sounds. I mean, I hope I hope you're okay, Freaky. I really do. I hope you're good. Um, yeah, I can totally make a clip about jumping in and but I think you only get 20 seconds. So we may I think I may have taken a bit longer than 20 seconds to um, you know fix that so I'm very sorry that it did take me so long because it took me a little second to realize what had happened and that I was frozen and that I was legit frozen across the computer not just StreamYard, and then uh, that I was going to have to do a reboot so I actually jumped onto the phone straight away and while my phone had its um I had its little stand on it I didn't have it actually on anything because I was just using it to stand itself up so I could keep an eye on it so yeah Gone are the days where we lose our total stream, which, you know, I really appreciate because I, I can't remember how many times we had part one and part two of a stream. Not anymore. Look at this. We're at the end of this row. This is the last row of this color and there's not even the repeat of the color. It's done. Okay. I'm just like, I'm just nervous now. It's like the chat hasn't moved. It, like, can someone say hello? Because I'm like freaking out. <laughs> Am I frozen again? No, my screen and everything, they're not, they're not frozen this time. So I'm thinking everything's okay. Oh, we're still here. Thanks, Kelly. <laughs> Thanks, Nikki. Our hands are busy. Thanks. <laughs> That's good. I appreciate that. Just after having everything crash and burn for a second and then the, the chat freezes, I was just like, oh, wait, no. Did I botch it up again? Oh, dear. But I didn't. You're awesome. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you all jumping in and saying hello so I know I'm not all by myself. That song just jumped into my head and I nearly started singing it. And I was like, no, copyright issues. You can't. Um, Lisby says, busy trying not to kill my colour change. This colour is going over in the box. We don't need it anymore. I'm just checking just to see if I've got more of that pink before I start on it. Oh, I do. Glad I checked. I've got a splodge of mess. Is it the same? They're different. Oh, they're close enough. Uh, we'll need to bore wind this. So 
let's let's do that. Um, can I just say I hate tinking sticky yarn? Yes, Mel, I am with you 100% on that one. Or fluffy yarns. Um, I have a question. Did you buy your laptop stand from Amazon? I did. I'll pop a link in for you in the fun zone a bit later on. I love it. Honestly, I just love my laptop stand. It's one of those things where I had been using one with fans for a long time and then realized that I didn't need that one. That and I, you know, broke it. So when I was like shopping for a new one, I was doing a lot of research on laptop stands and, you know, do you need fans in your laptop stands and stuff like that. And the resounding answer was um, no. So, you know. Hang on, there's a big knotty McNotta pants right there. All right, let's see what we can do here. Do I need to change the camera angle? Or are you guys happy to not see the windy windy going on? Let me know. Um, yeah, it was inexpensive, I can tell you that. I was really surprised. And it was very easy to put together. And I shoved my laptop, uh, like my keyboard and everything under it. For when, like right now, my keyboard's under it. So that it's out of the way of the desk. Hang on. I know I'm far away from the microphone. I just realized I'll move it over in a second. I'm just hands are full. There we go. Microphone's closer. This one is such a mess. I'm not proud of myself for leaving it like this in, in the storage. I'll probably get a good couple of rows out of this too. Um, happy enough. Can you show your chair? Um, which chair? There's two chairs in here. Um, you're happy enough not to see the windy windy? Oh, that's good. Makes it easier. Don't have to mess in touch with things that I don't really want to mess in touch with right now. I'm a bit paranoid. Um, I really hate that I have 50 col 15 colour changes going on right now in a blanket I'm currently crocheting. On oh, my new chair. Um, it's got a it's got stuff on it. Um, so I bought a really cool new little stool um, to sit on while I'm doing things. Um, I found that when I'm having to do really long things, it's not comfortable. But when I'm like running in and out of the office, packing orders and things, it's perfect. It's such a good little thing. Um, I'll, I'll pop a link for that over in the fun zone as well. Again, really inexpensive. Um, I, I did put rollerblade wheels on it because I'm obsessed. I, I have rollerblade wheels on all my chairs. Why did I start with this end of the ball of the, well, whatever it is? It's not a ball, is it? This, this, what's the word? What word are we using to describe this? A tangled mess. Um, yeah, this mess, it's right. But, you know, then we'll be ready for the next row. Well, the next row is purple. I probably could have done the purple row before digging out this. Um, yarn bath. Yes, we are still live, Claire. 
Yes, I'm an hour behind you, remember? So we're still live for another half an hour or so after, you know, our stream crashed and we had to jump in on a phone. That was exciting. That got the blood pumping, the heart racing. Whole computer just crashed. Well, it froze is what it was. I wish I knew why. Okay, over the top for you. Oh, okay, I'm just moving my hands out just for a second. My shoulder's just getting a little bit sore holding it on that angle. Back in shot again. Yarn bath is not my favorite. There we go. All the nuts are out. Let's wind it up. Um, I got stuck chatting and had to pause the video. Oh, there's a knot right there. Thought I felt that. That was a sneaky one. He nearly got through, didn't he? Not quite, though. We found you. Okay. Done skiers. There's a yucky bit on the end. That is gone now. There we go. That's much nicer, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Where are we up to? Row 196. Let me look at the chart here. One ninety-six. This is the last row of purple before we start the new color. Yay! Yay! Um let's have a look. So Claire's fault the computer crashed because she paused us. Yeah, I'm 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 up for blaming Claire. I'm all right with that. Everyone else right with Blame and Claire for the stream crashing? Excellent. Much easier to work with when it's a little cake. Exactly. Can you imagine having to have cr tried to crochet like a row of mosaic dealing with that, like, sh like total shamozzle of a mess that that was? Like, I'm glad we don't have to. Okay. I wonder. Got to blame someone, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Claire's not here to defend herself. So, Claire, it is. Oh, <laughs> Claire's like, yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, good. We fixed it. We got going, didn't we? Um, how many rows in this blanket? In it's not, um, for me, there's 351 rows. And I'm currently up to um, 324. Um, so, yeah, 351 and I'm currently at 324. So we're doing great. We're getting there. We're really getting there. And then there's the border. 
<laughs> it's like, yay, finished. Not quite finished. Then there's the border. Uh, crochet, <laughs> crochet Claire is now at Woolies buying food. Boring. While you're there, can you grab me some milk? Thanks, Claire. That'd be awesome. It might not be in the best condition by the time it made to me. Yeah, but it looks like thousands. It does look like thousands. You're right. It really does. It feels like thousands. You know, but like for a long time, we've only gotten two to three rows done during a live stream. And that's the only work that's been done on it throughout a week for so many weeks. So, you know, that's a, that's like three rows a week. That's, that's more than a hundred weeks. So it's just not enough. So I picked up the pace a little bit this week and grabbed an extra few rows, but not many. Uh, what will you do when it's finished? I mean, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. It'll probably be the middle of summer, so I definitely won't be putting it on my bed, let me tell you that. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'll do with it once it's finished. I'll start another project for certain. That's definitely going to happen. Maybe the knitted blanket in the eight-ply cotton. So I would love your pattern suggestions. Go and pop them over in the fun zone. Um, Bendigo eight-ply cotton patterns i have four balls each of two colors plus i've probably got some little specks of color additional like i've got a really nice purple that would look good with it um but i only have one ball of the purple and i'm not buying more what do you mean what are you going to do with me what will you do when it's finished no do with you I, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm stressed out now. What does that mean? <laughs> my hair's gone all crazy. I don't like it when my hair does this. Um, oh, my, I would have to put that on my bed each, and fold it back each evening. It's too bad it's sorting. I mean, that's not a bad idea. Uh, oh, I, I understand now. Thank you, Lizby. Well, you've focused on this for years. What will you focus on now? Something smaller. Something smaller. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on something smaller for quite some time. I'm making lap rugs and knee lap rugs. I am not making a queen size blanket for a long time. This was my intention was not to work on this for years. I wanted it to be done. And then I just didn't. And then it got hot and it went in the naughty corner for six months. And then it took me a while to get back into it just because I hadn't worked on it. But you guys have totally been the driving force to keep it going. Um, why don't you weave a blanket? I mean, that's always a possibility. I've got looms that will do the job. Um, uh, Dolores says that I placed the Persian Dreams blanket link over there, but I didn't realize you already had yarn. Probably won't work for that with that in mind. That's okay. I will totally take it on board for the next one because I'm not doing projects that are going to take me two years again for a while. I want some. I need some quick, fast projects that make me feel good about myself. Not looking at the queen, going, "Oh my gosh, I'll be working on this for two years." Off and on, off and on for two years. Without much in between, I have to say, I'm not coming to finish yours. No, Sally. That's a hard no. Um, Leanne says, I felt like that when I finished my first interlocking blanket. I'm so looking forward to the next one now, many months later. Oh, I am definitely got my eye on more mosaic crochet without a doubt. I love it. Um, I absolutely love it. I, but I just think... I'll do smaller projects. I, I think I've learnt my lesson in going bigger than the biggest. <laughs> Sally's like, oh, spinning is fast. And I've actually got, I've, I want to finish spinning up that bat. It's not quite finished and I have to hide it and defend it from Louis. Um, so I, that would be something nice to get finished as well, finish spinning up the bat. Christina says, my largest blanket was a California king size 
three years off and on. Yeah. So this this blanket is um, this is an Australian queen size. I don't I don't I do know that the Australian queen and the US queen are different. Um, so far, it is 2.2 meters wide and it's over two meters tall. Uh, the only reason I know it's only over two meters tall is I can't actually reach any higher than that. So I'll have to lay it out and measure it, but it's very long. And this is also still without the border. Um, would you do a baby blanket for a gift in cotton yarn or wool? Baby is due in June. I would do cotton because it's Australia. And even cotton will still keep a baby warm in winter, especially if they've got their little little things on. And they're more likely to be able to use it longer. So that's my opinion. Everyone can do that one amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, my sock blanket was three years off and on. Uh, I only finished because I was in extended lockdown. Yep, yep. Yep. Cotton goes through the washing machine without felting. Excellent point, Linda. I mean, so does Superwash, but, you know, it's definitely easier to wash and dry. Lots of important factors when making gifts for new mums, especially if you want them to use the gift. It needs to be super easy to look after, not get worried if it gets, like, you know, up chuck on it. You need to be able to just constantly toss it in the machine and wash it. My coziest memory sock yarn blanket took me three years. Couldn't work on it in the summer, though, too hot. Yeah. Hey, Ruth, have an awesome day. Have an awesome night's sleep, and thanks for jumping in. Natalie says, just got my latest issue of Inside Crochet. Meh. Look, you know what? I feel that way about a lot of different magazines. I, I get them and then you're just like, really? You've got to put out four of these a year and this is what you send me? Really? I don't subscribe to any of them now. I just grab the patterns I want online. And if I happen to spot one that I love in a magazine, I love it enough for that whole to pay for the whole magazine then I'll consider it. Because, like, these magazines are quite expensive to get in Australia. Like, what's the – does anyone know off the top of their head what the cost is of, like, an inside crochet or something like that in Australia, like from an Australian news agent? Um, Molly said, also stopped buying magazines, yep. Did, oh, Nat's got the digital subscription, yep. That's what I tend to go for now because that International Post is a killer. Also, they take up so much room. I've got an entire bottom shelf of a bookshelf that's just filled up with, like, magazine boxes. Oh, Freaky, we're looking at 15 to $20 Australian dollars for, for a, a magazine, and it's just like, yeah, it's, it's disappointing. Yeah, Nettie, mostly paying for ads, and the ads pay to be there. Yeah. It's kind of sad. Like I'd love to support these things because I know they're supporting designers, but I just, it's just not worth it for me. I'll just buy them online. Like most of them you can buy the individual patterns now as well. Aliane, have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you later on. Oh, yeah, international shipping is just horrendous. Just horrendous. Vampir says, when I buy a craft magazine at our local, it's about $24 each. That sounds about right. They're just so expensive. So, yeah, I'd much rather just, I keep an eye on them and I check out what's in them and if there's something good, um, yeah, then I'll, then I'll get it. If there's not, I don't. 
And I love supporting Knitty, like Knitty.com. I mean, I, I understand that's all knitting and that's not crochet, but that's a really fun one. Um, and they've been going for such a long time as well. Freaky Geek. Oh, okay, you have to make a cup of. Um, I'm lucky that our club buys them and I can just borrow them from there. That's great. I wonder if I'll get this row finished by the end. Because wouldn't that be cool knowing that the next time I pick up the hook, it's going to be the new colour? That would be pretty cool. Benfi says, sometimes I get lucky and buy a three-pack for the price of one. Yeah, that's really awesome when that happens. Most of the time you can find the single patterns on Ravelry after the magazine isn't current anymore. That's exactly right, Stacey. That's what I try to do. And then you can just buy the one. It's, it is normally like $7 or $7.50 or something. But it's like, you know what? I just want that one. I didn't want the whole whole magazine. Um, yep. I love getting the past issues at the thrift or bookstores. Much more affordable. Yep. Agreed for sure. I've actually, I'm, I'm actually going to be getting rid of all of my physical copies that I've got here. I've, I've got the digitals for the ones that I wanted. I went through them and um, I'm just going to get rid of them. Um, oh yeah. That's the other thing. Your, your library might even have access to the digital versions too. You might not even have to get the, the paper versions from the libraries. I love that they're doing that now. Saving so much space, more space for books. I, I love my like craft books though, like the ones that I go out and buy. Like I've got like both of the, I've got like a pile of Doris Chan books for crochet, which I love. Um, and then I have um, like a lot of sock knitting books. My favorite are the Charlene Church sock knitting books, sensational knitted socks and more sensational knitted socks. I love those books. Um, but yeah, like, you know, but I tend to buy more stitch dictionaries now. But every now and again, there'll be someone who puts out a book that I'm just like, oh, my gosh, that is amazing. I want that book. And who was – I saw – Josephine had some lately that I really like. Um, they're beautiful. They're, and and it's, it's nearly like they're coffee table books as well. They're just beautiful paper, beautiful imagery, fantastic patterns. And, you know, if I'm going to buy a book, that's what I want. I don't want dodgy, thin, horrid paper. I want amazing paper. If I have to pay for this thing and I have to store it, I want to enjoy using it. Yes, they um knit uh, knit spin girls. They really do. They just had a. I don't know if it's still running, but there was a forty percent off sale on a pile of their books. I popped a link over in um on the Facebook group or page. I think I put it on the page. I don't know if I put it in the group, but um yeah, there's um there is definitely a big sale happening. Yeah, that's the thing, Nettie. I, I don't know what the case is for everybody, but I know my local library, if I ask for something, um, they put it on a list and and sometimes they can get it in for me. So um, it's always definitely worth asking the question. We're nearly at the end of this row. You guys, we've done three rows today. I'm so excited. So excited. And we had like a, a total stream meltdown. So we are able to pick that up and still keep crocheting. Just keep crocheting, crocheting, crocheting. Woot, woot. That's exactly right, Sally Mod Extraordinaire. Woot, woot. 
Um, I bought a book recently because it had a pattern to make amigurumi print style because print is amazing. Yes. I have a total soft spot for Erin Lee and her amigurumi. I'm yet to finish my first one. It's been put on hold because I found that every time I was working on that, I was feeling guilty about this. So that can be my next little project that I finish, I think, maybe on the weekend. I'll see. I'll see how I feel. No promises. No pressure. Don't put pressure on me. I has enough of the pressures. Uh, also, his chat is great to just listen to. Have I missed something? Nettie says, how do you chat and talk at the same time? It would totally throw me. Practice, Nettie. Practice. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but sometimes when I get to a tricky spot, I do stop talking just because I'm, like, concentrating and I've got to get my tongue in just the right spot. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, but, yes, and I choose carefully the patterns that I do during live streams. I don't do, um, I don't do really highly intricate patterns that require like an absolute boatload of concentration. Um, and this one, you get into a rhythm because it's a repeat over and over again. Once you get started, you're pretty right. Um, one, two, three, that, two, and I'm at the end. So I, I pause again because I need to look at the chart to work out where I'm up to. Uh, can I say this chat is great to listen to while doing groceries? Oh, you can. We, we'll allow that. Uh, yeah. We'll definitely allow it. Okay. The next row is going to be in the rouge, the new colour. Should we start it? I mean, we only have 12 minutes. I really want to start it. I'm going to start it. Like, you know, we balled up. We got everything ready. We should just start it, right? I'll go and grab my yarn bowl for this one. Guys, I dug out my yarn bowl, my Knit Picks yarn bowl. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Looks, looks like a little cauldron. It's very dark timbered. But it is a dark brown. It's nearly a black. Do it, do it. Yay for starting. Yeah. Second last colour and we have officially started it. Okay. Wow. I'm pretty happy about this. I like this colour. I'm not a big fan of of pink but i really do like this pink in this project it works um yay for starting oh let's get a dangly bit get away from there dangly bit we don't need dangly bits in the way ruining things Oh, this is one where I have to do lots of thinking. Oh, gosh. One. I like the I like the colour three colours ago. One, two, this one here. It's it's probably a bit more orange than what you think, honestly. I wouldn't really think of this as a watermelon y colour. I think this is more watermelony. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if the, uh, I don't know if the cameras are really doing the best for the colours. So, yeah. The brown, 
You like the brown. Oh, that does look pink. That's it's a brown. That's definitely brown. That's not working, is it? Oh, there you go. Look at that camera. Hang on. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do something here. We're just going to switch cameras. All right. Just so because this camera does color better than this one. So we've got this pinky color now. It's called Rouge. Then there was the blush. Oh, this is the blush, sorry, which is a soft pink. And then that's definitely a sort of a it's 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 a shade of brown. The watermelon sugar high song stuck in your head. Yes. Uh, is one of the colors called persimmon? Yes, it is. I don't, can't remember which one. I'd have to look it up for you. But yes, I definitely have one in here called persimmon. Um, I don't know if there's a burn number. Hang on a second. I wrote out all my colors. Ah, oh, that piece is gone. I oh, know here it is. Um, lady slipper, rouge, blush, seashell, coral wine, red paprika, orange cranberry caution eggplant there was definitely persimmon or maybe it might be one of these copper clarets copper is coral claret was wine i don't know but i definitely had one called persimmon um yeah the overhead camera look it 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 does the best it can so um it's showing up the pink more realistically this is a little brighter orange than what you're seeing and that is definitely like a what i'm going to do is grab a photo oops hang on don't want that hang on i said no to that There we go. Right button helps if you press the right button. All right, I'll share that in the fun zone later. Um, give you a better idea. Oh, persimmon was the color choice you were regretting tonight. Yeah. It doesn't go with everything. But, I mean, Dolores, that's, a, that's like a prime example of, like, when you order colors online... I've got two different monitors here and they even look different coming through to the same cameras in the two different monitors. So it's just one of those things where people can do the best that they can do to get a photo, but it's going to depend on so many things as to whether or not it ends up looking what you think it looks like when you order. I remember I had a friend who ordered yarn from her phone and kept getting annoyed that it was nowhere near the color that she was ordering until we I looked at her phone and she had the blue light filter on. So she was expecting all these warm colors and it wasn't that. Um, so, um, and yeah, and because she was, you know, her screen was changed so that the blue light filter was doing its job, it was making it so that when she ordered colors, when they arrived, they were nothing like she was expecting. So, yes, all sorts of little things can change stuff for you. It was just too close in color with the coral. Yeah. Oops. Two. 
what are you guys all going to have for lunch today or dinner? I don't know. I'm hungry and I don't know what I'll make. I might make spicy noodles. I haven't done spicy noodles in a while. Our little tomato bush is literally exploding. So I went out there to pick tomatoes this morning with all the rain that we've had. The little A pile of the little tomatoes actually like have popped. So I had to go through and clean all those off. Angela had chicken Alfredo for dinner. That sounds lovely. Rice paper rolls for game winner. I love rice paper rolls so much. Um, Linda says, I have to cook dinner tonight. I have no idea what I'm making. Do you know what? I opted for takeaway last night. So now tonight I have to cook something as well. And I'm just like, oh, what do I want to make for tea that everybody will eat? Francis has made a roll with ham, mayo, and baby spinach leaves. Nice. I'm thinking spicy noodles with, I don't know what I've got. I'm, I've definitely got some mushrooms and capsicum, so add those. Put in a little bit of egg. Egg always is good. Um... I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to raid the fridge and check what's in there to see what I'm. What, see what I've got to work with. Now, do you guys want to just keep going until I finish this rug, or would you like me to end on time? Because I'm happy to do either. Because if I uh, end the stream, I'm just going to keep going anyway. Because I don't like to move the blanket with yarn attached. Louis, it's too much of a lure for the Louis dog. Probably just a peanut butter sandwich. I did that the other day and then was starving all afternoon. And then I ended up just eating so much crap. So I'm not going to do that again. That was a mistake. Keep going. Okay. All right, guys, we can do that. We can keep going. You knew that was going to happen, didn't you, when we decided to, with 15 minutes to go, that I was starting a new row. Uh, I should go away to prepare lunch to the walking dead here. Yes, you should. Absolutely. You could make spicy ramen. Vanfi can stay here with me and you can go in the kitchen, Artsag. Um, but, yeah, just, um, you know, sometimes, oh, what have I done there? No, no, that's right. Just, just keep going, going, going. This is one of the rows I try not to actually do while on camera because it's like it's not an even. Um, bye, Artag. Have an awesome day. Abby's just sent a message saying I've been buried and I'm just a little concerned. No, I um, may send a photo. Hopefully she's at the beach. So I'm just hoping she's just in the sand, okay? I'm really hoping that that's all it is because I'm a helicopter parent. Luckily, I have a car today, so if I need to go to the rescue, I can because she went with friends. Oh, she did. She sent a photo. Abby's just sent a photo, and I think they've taken their own shade structure to the beach. I'm like, what? I'd never have thought to do that. I'm so glad they did. It's really hot out there today. Yeah, that's true, Freaky. I agree with you. That one would be a bit more stressful for me, I think. Hi, Louie. You getting restless there, big boy? He's doing the big turning around things, moving positions. And he's flopped back down. Oh, so are you all still working on your projects while we hang out here?
oops, two stitches Chantal. Got to get it right. Game Widow's eating her lunch. Awesome. <laughs> yep, making myself some lunch. Awesome. Stuffed up my counting back on track now. That's good. I'm glad you're back on track. Apparently I need more focus. I know those feelings. Um, oh, I had to stop as I need YouTube for the next video. Still knitting. Just sitting. Just sitting. Holly has to power through another two and a half hours of crochet tonight. Really? Have you got a deadline on your project or you just want to get it done? hung out washing earlier and we've just had a storm blow through oh no <laughs> still tinking the sticky yarn oh gosh is it working at least please tell me it's working I hate it when I go through all the effort to tink something and then realize no yeah that was right I didn't actually need to do that awesome that's great love that don't love that I don't love that at all Oh, I'm very, very behind on a baby blanket that's due next Friday. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. Well, you'll have to let us know how it goes, Holly. We'd love to know that you get it all done. Jennifer says, just what we need, a drop of rain. I don't know where you are, Jennifer, but around here we do not need it. Um, trying to finish a great pumpkin costume down to the last 40 rows of knit, then just a bit of sewing. Oh, gosh. Good luck. I was actually talking to Abby about Halloween costumes because we're going to a, um, a birthday party that's a fancy dress party. And because she keeps like coming up with all these suggestions, I'm like, not wearing that. It'll be too hot. Not wearing that. It'll be too hot. And Abby's like, why are all the costumes too hot? And I'm like, because they're all designed by people who wear them for Halloween. And in America, Halloween is in autumn or in fall, whereas here it's in spring. So it's stinking hot and muggy and humid and gross. Deb says, I should be packing considering I live for two weeks in Sydney tomorrow morning. Oh, my gosh. Yes, you should be packing. I didn't realize you are away for two weeks. I knew you were going away. Um, oh, gosh. Yeah, that mohair trick in the freezer totally works. I've tried it. But if it's not mohair, I don't know if it'll work. It could be worth a try. It might not just be just mohair that it works on. But I've only ever used it on mohair myself. Uh, face makeup for mild Halloween masks for colder climates. Jennifer says we can't even park in our driveway. It's so soft and muddy. So, oh, okay, so yes, that was a sarcastic yay more rain. <laughs> um, gosh. Christina says, Halloween costumes here need to be big enough to go over snowsuits. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, we get, we, it's like hot here. It's like, because we're in subtropics and it's spring. So, you know. Ew. <laughs> it's like we talk about, you know, carving pumpkins and stuff. Abby would love to carve pumpkins. It's totally something that she would just love to do, except it is not pumpkin season and a, the cost to get a pumpkin to carve it just for Halloween was like we did it one year. It was $27 and it rotted within two days, like, like moldy rotted. And we had to bin it. I was like, there's got to be, a, there's got to be a solution. And we do the pineapples now. They still rot and stuff, but they do hold their shape better and they're in season. So they're cheap. So we can have a pile of them. The other fun one is watermelons. So you scoop out all the watermelon and use it. 
and you can make really fun carvings with the watermelon skins, but they all still rot is the problem. Francis says a local baker was making pumpkin-shaped shaped cob loaves. That is clever. That is clever. Yeah, yeah, you could totally carve watermelon. And then we could put all the watermelon flesh in the blender and use it with, with beverages that may or may not be kid-friendly. <laughs> um, Angela says, I have a friend who lives across the road from a pumpkin field. Oh, wow. Does that get, like, I've seen, like, I mean, Hallmark movies <laughs> of pumpkin fields. Is there anything like those in real life? I don't know. Well, I've never seen like a legit proper pumpkin field. I've grown pumpkins. Crochet some pumpkins. That's a good idea. What's probably a better idea is just getting some like fiber fill or something and some fabric and just wrapping the fabric around it and then tying it on to get the pumpkin shapes. That'd be a really cool fast way. Lightweight with fiber fill and um pumpkin fabric pumpkin colored fabric you can even get cool like spooky colored spooky orange fabrics that have got like you know bats or something on them guys we are near the end of the row we have our first row nearly completed of our second last color and it's a short color too is something i noticed these last couple of colours are quite short. Wabadu is right, Sally. Gosh, I'm like, hmm, maybe I should check my, check my game later. I haven't, I haven't played it in a long time. We're nearly there. Um, we could use the polystyrene ball shape and cover with fabric. Yeah, if they're big enough. I was thinking big. I was thinking like, you know, big pumpkins and stuff. Bye, Freaky Geek. Have an awesome one. Okay, so we've done that one. Then one, two, like that, one, two, and then our last three stitches of the row. And we are done. We did it, you guys. And quite quickly too. Look at that. All done. Champion effort. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me while I finished off that row. I know it meant we went a little longer. Um, I'm really happy with the progress we made today for the blanket. And I will see you all. Yeah, it was very quick, Nettie. I agree with you. I don't know why I'm like, I'm looking at it going, I wonder if I made a mistake. Um, but uh, I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. I will see you all here next week and keep an eye out on the Big Wool Show. We're releasing content over there started started yesterday or the day before. So there's all uh, interviews with uh, the sponsors coming up as well as uh, the stall holders. Some of them make their own little interviews, uh, little videos, and they get put up there as well. So have an awesome one and I will see you all next week. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.